Okay, guys, I think I think an easy question is here. Combat system for Devil May Cry. You guys just took the original Devil May Cry and just went, there you go, done. <laughs> Was, wasn't that easy, surely? No, I mean, it's, it's a good point you make because DMC combat is amazing anyway, yeah. always has been. So we had lots of really good material to draw upon, which, you know, you don't get that chance usually. Um, you have to come up with everything from scratch. Well, we had a really good foundation to start from and then we sort of just looked at all the things that they'd done and then saw sort of how we could put our own twist on it. Ninja came to us with what we, they'd like to do and we gave them advice on how to do that or if they brought something from a previous game, uh, we told them how about doing it for this game and change things around to make it your own. Um, what, what I found very interesting was um, almost straight away you're, you're throwing in the, the deep end of things. I mean, you guys don't really pay, uh, spread out each individual ability. Within within a couple of hours, Dante's got the full range of manoeuvres. Uh, was that was that a conscious decision uh, by yourselves to try and get perhaps long-term Devil May Cry fans on board with what you're hoping to implement in this game? Yeah, well, I mean, there's a couple of things. Um, Firstly, definitely like getting getting those long term players f familiar with the controls straight into the game without having to sort of go through a slow process of learning things they already know. That was important. But as well as that, it, it is an action game and you want it to be fast paced. And with all of these games, you know, you've got a very small window to really grab the audience's attention. So it's like you want to front load as much of that as you can and sort of get the player feeling the fun of the game as quickly as possible. <laughs> Uh, Dante was already able to use uh, guns and swords from the beginning of the game as part of his character setting, so we felt it was fine to just have him be able to do that right away. What, what can you feel from what you've seen Ninja Theory's uh, previous uh, games? What, what did you feel that Ninja Theory were bringing to the Devil May Cry universe in, in specifics about the combat? Well, playing Ninja's previous games like Heavenly Sword and Enslaved, uh, I played them myself and came to understand how their control responsiveness and their desire to let the players do what they want to do and have that happen quickly and thought they could bring that to the table with DMC and uh, we were able to let them do that. So, sort of moving from Enslaved to Devil May Cry, Enslaved obviously had the, the very strong melee combat style but it, it, it worked with Monkey's character where it's very brutish, very punchy sort of elements to it. With Devil May Cry, it's uh, Dante style is a bit more a bit more finesse to it. H how did you guys go from perhaps those two, that style to the Dante style? I mean, I did work specifically on Enslaved. Um, I started at Ninja Theory at, at the beginning of Devil May Cry, so I don't have as much experience with that game, so commenting in juxtaposition yeah. is, is tricky. But um, certainly, I guess Monkey had... He was more focused around being like the brawn because he had his offset, which was trip. Um, so that kind of made sense. But Dante is sort of the focus of, of DMC and he has sort of a, a broader range of things. So he's got his quicker weapons, his slower weapons, his, his fast attacks, his damaging attacks. And it's that versatility in your ability to build your own combos, I think, which makes him fun. And with that, with, with building the combos up and, and certainly the, the versatility as well, that's a lot of in-depth stuff just off the tip of the iceberg. Um, is there any more um, below the surface with the, the option to maybe cancel moves on the fly to sort of transfer into other um, manoeuvres? Absolutely. I mean, jump cancelling is a really good example because this is something that sort of was born into the DMC series and that's something we really wanted to keep. So all of the aerial attacks, for example, you can you can jump cancel all of those attacks. Um, you can use gun cancels on the ground in some cases. Um, the cancel windows for evades and jump are often different to going into attacks and movement. So there there is a lot of depth there that you can get into when you start understanding all the timings of all the moves. So it's an 
まあ、さっきも言ったんですけど、その。When it comes to Devil May Cry, it's a game where you can do、uh, lots of different things, and we wanted to be able to make sure that players could do all the kinds of things, not just that they wanted to do, but we wanted them to be able to do, and gave advice to Ninja about that as far as down to the frames, individual frames, on making those things possible, and making it possible for different players to have different styles of playing Devil May Cry, but still being able to enjoy it to the fullest. なってんじゃないかなと思います。I, I'm not too sure whether this is sort of incorporates into the sort of combat system, but、um, I just want to talk about the,、um, the air dash that you can pull off. Now, you guys have,、uh, have kept Dante's sort of like very high vertical jumps, but almost like a shallow distance between them. Was the inclusion of the air dash、uh, more to give players、uh, an extra element of combat maneuver on the fly? Or I keep saying on the fly, I don't know why I do that,、um, but to give them a bit more,、uh, more options, really. And I guess also factor into the platforming element of it? Yeah, certainly. I mean, we wanted to push、um, what Dante could do with the platforming,、um, and we wanted to keep it quite fast paced, so we didn't want to have slow puzzles that kind of held the player up. So the inclusion of lift and pull as traversal mechanics, and as well the dash, meant that you, you didn't really need to stop when you were doing those traversals. You could kind of keep moving forward, and it was kind of action packed.、Um, in as far as the combat, I don't think it's as useful in combat as what it is in traversal, but there are some, of, some enemies like the, the flying harpies and stuff.、Um, sometimes you can be quite far away from them. Getting to them can be quite important for taking their wings off or whatever, so using the, the glide in that instance is quite useful.、Um, enemy design. Obviously, the Devil May Cry series is very renowned for fantastic、um, enemies that Dante's faced in the past. How do you guys? Go over that bar. I mean, it's not a case of even raising it. I mean, it must be incredibly hard to sort of match that. How do you guys, I mean, what elements did you bring into it? What sort of research did you look into? God, that's a lot of questions in one question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in this instance,、um, Asuno san and Hiraki san's experience was just invaluable because, because they've worked on these games and they understand how to put them together. And really, it was about trying to get the things that Dante can do, which are fun,、mm-hmm. and designing enemies that. Pull the player towards doing those fun things. So rather than just saying, you know, we want a big tanky guy that can stomp around, it's like, well, what are the fun things that the player can do?、Mm-hmm. Like, you know, using the angel lift and the demon pull, switching weapons, using evade at the right time, jumping at the right time. And then how do we build the enemy's abilities around drawing out that fun in the combat system? The thing that we thought was important for the bosses, especially this time, was for them to teach the player how to use Dante's moves, in fact, how to beat the bosses themselves. And、uh, more important than the visuals is the content, like in their action patterns and things that you have to do to beat them. And、uh, wanted to use the bosses as a vehicle to improve the player and make them enjoy DMC that much more.